we have to see that there are people who are always going to try and influence us uh, away from what we understand and what we believe. Now, the challenge for us is, okay, what is the influence of the Holy Spirit and the Scriptures, and what is the, what is the um, you know, in teachings of the Scriptures, and then what is the influence of people who are trying to help us abandon our relationship with God? And you see, there's, um, there's a complete, you know, and we have, to be, we have to be able to discern what is the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth, of course, is the Holy Spirit. And what is the truth that God wants to impress upon our life so that we can become more like Christ and so we can deal with our life? <laughs> so, um, and we see with what's going on with Job is that here's a test. Now, uh, we say, well, it, it began with God. No, it didn't. Um, the test began with uh, God understanding what Satan is up to, okay? What is Satan up to? He is the accuser of the brethren, he, meaning that he is looking out, he's looking to make accusations against us, not only before God, but against ourselves. So, that's why we have to understand what the scriptures are telling us about who we are as a person in Christ. Okay, now as a person in Christ, we have a responsibility then to follow the teachings of Christ. And one of the things that, I, in, my, in the sermon this morning, I learned something I never knew before. Knew it, but didn't know it. You gotta wait till then to get it. But, <laughs> but uh, the idea is that there are, the, the, the idea is that we then have to be responsible enough to know what this truth of the scripture is and that we have to hold on to that truth because Jesus, you know, in the Sermon on the Mount, he's, you know, I'm the light of the world, you know, um, that he is, the, the, he is truth, he is the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So we find that the truth is what we find in Christ. It's not what... Um, uh, what was that one guy said? The truth is what I say it is, you know. <laughs> and that's kind of what uh, the philosophy of our world. The truth is what I, th what I say it is. And, uh, you know, and if you're a dictator, <laughs> you're going to enforce that upon your subjects. So, um, anyhow, the three friends that come to Job are, are individuals who have opinions about what has happened to Job, which is also the, um, the um, kind of the norm, the normal way of thinking for that time period. And it's still even the normal way. Some, it's kind of the norm that some people res re revert to is, if you've got a problem, then you did something bad. And so if you've sinned, <laughs> uh, if you've got something bad going on in your life, it's a result, a result of sin, and not always so. You know, and that's what we find out with Job and him being secure enough in his relationship with God. Well, there is the natural consequences of our action. You know, if you go rob a bank, chances are you're going to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, if you're not shot, you know. You know, it's, it's just, one, you know, it, you do something, there are consequences. Where there's an action, there's a reaction. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever, you, whatsoever man soweth, he's going to reap. So you rob a bank, you, get, you go to jail. You, you, know, you plant good seed, you reap good seed. You know? So it isn't that far-fetched that when God is telling us to do good things you know, and to um, forgive people and to love and you know, over, to keep on going and things like that because you're going to receive those things, it's going to keep coming back into your life. So last week, uh, we studied the set of tragedies that composed uh, Job's first test, in which Job lost his wealth and he lost his possession, most of his possessions, and his, of course, his children. Uh, he lost all of his children, and all of that occurred in the same day. Hmm. That's a great loss, you know, like um, the, the Rachel's neighbor you know, he was killed at the, the racetrack. Uh, you know, the, the car, you know, he, was a, he, he drove the truck that would push cars to get them started and things if they spun out, and he did this for 40, 50 years. 
So anyhow, he's sitting on the back of his truck, you know, on, I guess on the hood, not the hood, the, it's turned around backwards, and, you know, the bed is facing the racetrack, and he sits on, up on, as it were, on a blanket on top of the, on top of the cab. Well, the, the car came over and landed on him and killed him. But his son and grandson always sat with him, but they were on vacation. So the tragedy would have been father, son, and grandson in one moment of time are killed. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that in itself is <laughs> extreme tragedy. Well, here we have all of Job's kids, all of his household being killed. One, one massive boom, they're all dead. So, Job remained faithful to God, and the, and the declaration is, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. One of the challenges is that we have to have faith before the challenges come if we're going to maintain our faith through the difficulties. Difficulties are not going to make you have faith. You're going to have the faith before it starts. You have to have this understanding of your faith and understanding of God and how God works, and his, his only goal is to protect and provide for us. So most of the time, you know, we, we have rules and laws to protect us. Most of the time. Well, the trouble is people don't want to accept rules. It cramps their style. <laughs> and so what do we do? We either, well, you know, whatever you want to do, go ahead. Or, you know, we have, to, we have to enforce the rules. So the rules are there for a reason. They're to protect us. And most times people don't understand that the rules are there to protect us. Uh, just like don't give out your mother's maiden name and your social security to people who call on the phone. <laughs> That's a rule. Don't do that. Why? Because it's there to protect you. <laughs> don't give it out to people, strangers you don't know. You know, don't do that. Why? That's there to protect you. Well, what if I want to? See what I mean? So when do we, when do we uh, acquiesce and when do we stay firm? Well, Job faces another, another test that Satan unleashes on him. And this time, Satan atta attacks Job's personal health. So most of, many can identify with that either in your own life or the life of a loved one. Um, Job's anguish was intensified because of his physical affliction. Um, so, and, and it happened soon after the first affliction. So everything is gone. Everything is, you know, is just totally wasted <laughs> His land, I mean, his possessions and everything are gone. And not only is that bad enough, then he comes down to destroying, as it were, his physical health. And, you know, perhaps he's near death. And uh, so, well, one of the things is when people have a near death experience, they have, a better, they have a better value of all the things in life. You know, when it comes to the um, end of life, Many, you know, people, are, they're trying, they would give anything, they'd give all their possessions for another day, another two days of life. So we have, you know, Job is then, you know, he's coming to this, this, this uh, truth about his life. Um, the account of their visits, this is his friends, um, they come to console him during his grief, and we have that uh, in our lesson today. And one of the things is that we are saying, okay, how does the scripture apply to us? All right? How does it uh, uh, serve as an example? Well, <clears throat> we then, as we said, need to have our faith in place before there's a tragedy. All right? We need to have an understanding that in all this, we do not charge God falsely. So we understand that in this lesson today, what shall, we re what shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job, in all this did not Job sin with his lips. So we find that Job is not accusing God. God is, you know, he's, you know, in everything, you know, the scripture tells us, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So what we're doing then is, saying, God is in charge of my life, me, personally, 
you personally. God is in charge of your life, and so when we are about giving thanks, then we are about thanking God for the good and the bad, the difficulties. And so, but we, we don't, doesn't say we understand them, it just says that we have faith enough to believe. But in that belief, we then are in that situation, we are challenged whether we are going to keep doing the same things we've always got done or we're going to look at things more differently and how that life is handled. And this is what happens with Job. Um, so the message of Job is for all students. Oh, it doesn't say students, it says situations. <laughs> I think students is better. Thus, the message of Job is for all situations and stages of life. We can apply these truths throughout our journey with Christ. Just as Job trusted God, we can trust God in the midst of sickness and pain and throughout all the difficulties of our life. Now, verse 1. Are we ready? It's exciting. You don't seem too excited. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going to take off. (laughs) Well, guess what? Satan is on a leash. And then one of the things we learn, we'll go through here. Again, there, there was a day and when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, one of the things is, and this is a Dave McGee thing, present means God summoned them. Okay? And it appears that Satan, in the last the first chapter and in this chapter, it appears that Satan just kind of strolls in, but perhaps he's summoned to be there because after this situation here, he's never mentioned again in the book of Job. Okay, so these are the two situations in which he is summoned. Okay, um, present themselves before the Lord. And the Lord said, here we have where God, Satan is not permitted to speak unless he's spoken to. And God said to him, See, God knows what's going on. God knows why he summoned him. God knows that he's been down there banging on Job's hedge of protection and he can't get in. He knows all this, so he summons him into the, into the, into the throne room of God with all the rest of God's creation, the angels. And he summons him in there and he's in there only by invitation. And um, God says to him, from whence comest thou? As if... You know, so God is saying to him, okay, Satan, what have you been up to? He already knows. But Satan answered the Lord. He he has to speak, and he has to speak the truth. In the presence of God, evil cannot speak lies. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yes. But Satan doesn't know everything. He deducts as it were, deductive reasoning, but he doesn't have reasoning. He, he has, his reasoning is, is skewed because his reasoning is on hatred, on bitterness, vengeance, and getting even. So everything that Satan does doesn't come from a, a, from a, a concept of logic and rhetoric and love and relationship. His, his perspective comes from bitterness, hatred, anger, anger um, envy, strife, that's, that's the whole makeup of, of Satan and his character. That's why people who are lost in sin or people who are angry, destructive, <laughs> vengeful, these are all the characteristics of evil. God is love, forgiveness, mercy, grace, long-suffering, pure thoughts. You see what I mean? So these are the complete op- polar opposites of, of thinking, so, and we have demonstrations of these polar opposites in people who are evil and vengeful and hateful and those who are loving and kind and following God. These people over here, you never see them launching programs to uh, feed the poor or to take care of the homeless or, you know, to help the suffering. It's always these people over here that are kind and good and religious. You don't find... Um, I won't go there. Uh, <laughs> there are some people that just never go there. And they're the ones that are most against Christianity. They don't, they don't have, you know, the National Bar Owners Association, not lawyers, but 
drinking bars. <laughs> you don't have the National Bar Owners Association helping the drunks and the alcoholics. <laughs> Over here. But anyhow. And so the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Same thing he said last week, last verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Hateth, he hates evil, escheweth. I looked that up. He hates evil, and still he holdeth fast to his integrity, excuse me, his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So he is a man of integrity. He's a man of, um, what is it? Purity, if we got that last week, um, that he has, purity is the idea of thoughts that are good, you know, pure. All right. So Job 2 begins by describing another day, sons of God present themselves. Um, Job 2.2, 2. God asked Satan, same question, where have you been? Satan is allowed to present and to speak only at God's invitation. God permits Satan to speak to exercise his will over Satan and demonstrate his power and might, God's power and might, over Satan. Always remember, evil does not have the last word. God has the last word. I, you know, uh, people who have been, you know, the worst of the worst, they don't get off, they stand before God. Everybody stands before God. Everybody gives account of their life. All right. So, Satan seems like such a great foe to us that it can be difficult to realize how small he appears in the presence of God. You see, we, anytime we think that evil is, is its, its magnitude is magnified out of proportion, remember who God is. Okay? Satan is nothing before God. No, no, not at all. He's a created being. And God created him for good, and he rebelled against God. See, we were created for good. Sin causes us to rebel against God. That's why we don't like rules. <laughs> don't tell me what to do, you know. It's like we don't like them because it goes against our human nature, but our spiritual nature, we see that it helps us to com conform to the image of Christ. All right. So um, Jesus declared, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. That's in Luke chapter 10, verse 18. I declare, I behold Satan falling like lightning from heaven. That's when Satan was kicked out of heaven, <laughs> you know. When he rebelled against God, and God threw him out. There was, there was no chance of rebellion. It's, you know, the, 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 I don't know, I could say the stupidity of Satan uh, is that he, somehow he thought that a third of the angels and him could overthrow the creator of the universe, the one who created them. And Just for instance, look at the faith of a believer in God. The faith of people who don't believe in God is they're trying to eradicate anything that is good, that is lovely, that is of a good report. If there's any virtue, if there's any praise, they want to eradicate it. They want to wipe it out because that stands in opposition to who they are. Okay? Satan wants that to happen to Job. Opposition to what he represents on the earth. Integrity. Um, a man of morals. A man of uprightness. You know, a man of good business and yet honest. <laughs> you know, this is, this is Job. Satan, Satan wants to destroy that. So, um, now he can visit God's dwelling place only by permission. So, he walks into the presence of God only by permission. Job 2.3, God again initiates the discussion with Job and asks Satan if he has considered my servant. So jo God's description of Job uh, that follows is exactly the same that he gave in 1.8. There is none like him on the earth, 
Same thing, repeating it all up. There's none like him on the earth. He's blameless, he's upright, fears God and turns away from evil. That's Job, all right? However, God continues. Uh, his description by saying, still holds fast to his integrity, although you incite me against him to destroy him without reason. Okay. The inciting or the, uh, the, the provocation is that Satan wants to prove to God that people will fail if you take away everything that's good in their surroundings. Right? And so God is saying, I don't think so. Well, I not think so. He won't do that. And Satan says, yeah, he will. All right. God paid tribute to Job for his faithfulness during the onslaught of his adversity, and he did not curse God or charge him foolishly. Did you ever say, God, why did you do this? Hello. Why don't you do this? I got a plan here, you know? <laughs> We've all told God what he should do. It's like the one guy said, you want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. <laughs> so, Job maintained his integrity, all right? That means, all right, uh, through the trials that came up to him without reason. There's no reason for the trials. Now, in our life, Things happen without reason. People say things against you, and you didn't do anything wrong. People um, tear down what you're doing, and, and, and you know, you're trying to do good, and people come against it. Without reason, there seems to be no reason for this. Well, there is a reason. Satan inf either influences their life, or Satan has created it, or blinded us to what we're doing. So it's either if it's created by us, created by others, or created by Satan himself, it doesn't matter. The answer is always the same. See, Jesus Christ. He gives me strength to go through the trial, wisdom and understanding to deal with the trial, and that we continue to pursue righteousness and the good and the upright. All right, so verse three, the Lord says to Satan, you incite me against him to destroy him without reason. Job did nothing to cause his first test. And Job only remained faithful, which caused his second test. <laughs> um, God is reminding Satan of his failure to discredit Job. You, me you messed up, didn't you, Satan? <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't get Job. You took away everything he had, but you couldn't get him to fail, could you? Well, Satan has... A well, I think if you take away his health, that's the next one. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. All that a man hath will he give for his life. People will do anything to live. Okay? Now, think of the early church and going into the arenas and being crucified and being fed to lions, used for target practice and all that stuff. They would rather die than denounce their faith. Job, God is, Satan is saying to God, you take away his health and put him in the position where he's going to die, he'll denounce you. Put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he's in thy hand, but save his life. You can't take his life. Satan on a leash. Always remember, nothing can come to us but through the hand of God. You've got to go through God first to get to us. Now, other, we, can't, we can't dictate, I can't tell you about other people, I can't, you know, why this person, that person. Don't know. What it does is, what are you going to do with it? What am I going to do with the difficulties I face? Am I going to revert to anger, bitterness, hatred? Am I going to be steadfast in the laws and the love of God and what I know God is saying? Or am I going to, well, whatever. So, Satan answered, Skin for skin. All right. Um, so he's told he could afflict Job. Behold, he is in thine hand. The response seems puzzling if we only consider it through our contemporary cultural lens. God's response was based on his eternal purpose. When we look at our life 
it's hard for us to see beyond the moment. We want to make the moment happy or pleasant or whatever, and there are some things we just can't make pleasant. (laughs) Can't. No matter how you swing it, no matter how you, you can't steal. (laughs) You can't kill. You can't lie. You see, you can't do these things. No matter how you spin it, it isn't, it is not going to work. Don't, we can't do it. So um, we want, if I can just get what I need at this moment, everything will be all right. Well, all that does is feed the next moment. And God's purpose for Job was not only in this, what in the life, in the momentary thing that he was facing, but it was for our life. So Job is suffering for our example. So for us to understand that Satan only can go so far. God put a hedge about Satan. God put a hedge about Job, and Satan couldn't get in. He was struck with sickness, but not couldn't take his life. See what I mean? Um, so, the Lord does not always explain. Um, what is it? Uh, we can find blessed assurance <laughs> in, this, uh, in this whole idea that uh, you are going to save his life. What else? Oh, Paul says there's no temptation that comes to us but such as common demand. So, we all have temptations, and uh, we've, every, it's part of the whole program of mankind. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life going to make me look good it's going to make me feel good it's going to make me more than what i am that was the test in in the garden of eden it's the same test now come to us so verse seven so when satan forth from the presence of the lord and smote job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head um they feel that this was elephantitis which is something mentioned in Deuteronomy 28. Um, What it does is it causes the limbs to become jointless and lumps enlarged like elephant legs. And the disease begins with the rising of uh, tubercular boils uh, at length resemble a cancer spreading all over the body when the body is afflicted and some of the limbs fall off completely. So, (laughs) he didn't have some, well, so, and he took him, you know, you want to know how bad it was and how much pain it was. He took a broken pot and scraped the sores to remove the rotten flesh and to somehow ease the itching. And he sat down among the ashes, meaning that he was, um, um, he sat down among the ashes, the ash heap, the the trash heap, and uh, so it was a symbol of saying that he was a castaway. He was cast out of the city. He was, um, what is it? Um, Cast off, an outcast. He was, he was, so here he is, the man who's the most prominent man in his society and his time and his region now sits on the ash heap, the, the garbage heap of, of his community declaring that he is a castaway. Now, well, he, he was treated like a leper. He treated himself like a leper, but he was not sentenced like a leper because his, his friends were able to go visit him. So his friends could visit him, so he really wasn't a leper, and he wasn't considered to be contagious, so he himself went and sat on the ash heap as a castaway. And it's in that place of being a castaway that his wife comes and said, dost thou still retain thy integrity? One of the things here is she (laughs) declares that her husband is a man of integrity. Just what God said about him. He's, an integ- he's a man of integrity. He, he, you know, he's an honest man. He's a man who, who doesn't, he, he shuns evil. He, you know, he's a man of integrity. And she says, you know, 
Why don't you just give that stuff up and curse God and die? Get it over with, you know? But she herself, she's lost her position in life. She's first lady of the East. She's lost her children, her 10 children. She's lost her possessions, her wealth, her status. She's lost everything too. So she's not a bad lady. She's just a lady in grief. Uh, so it says we can only imagine how we would respond in similar circumstances. So verse 10, but he said unto her, this is important, you speak as one of the foolish women. Now, foolish means lacking, a, lacking good sense or judgment. You speak as one lacking good sense or judgment. Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? Where do you think we got all this stuff from? We got it from God. And so it's all gone. It's still all God's. See, foolish understanding, I mean, we put that on all of us. <laughs> you know, wow, all this went away. That's foolish. You know, wow, we were you just some... You know, God was playing games with us and all this garbage. You see, no, we're lacking good sense and judgment. We're lacking good sense and judgment when we don't see the hand of God in everything we do. What? In everything that comes my way, it is the hand of God. Whoa. So that means we have to respond according to God's word and God's spirit, the spirit of truth that is inside of us. So the spirit of truth inside of me says, I'm going to give thanks to God because God can turn this around to make it good. I can't make it good by acquiescing and, you know, being a doormat and, you know, or being in anger and hurting and whatever. I have to understand what the good sense of the good judgment of God is. So, verse 11. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all his evil that was come upon him, they came, every one of them, from his own place. Now, we, if we understand from this, these three guys come from three different countries. We said it last week, how many, how many uh, camels Job had. I mean, he just doesn't have these thousands of camels just to have them run, walking around the pasture field. He's, he, you know, camels were trucks. <laughs> they were the tractor trailers of their time. So Job was uh, a tradesman. He was, he was, you know, he traded goods and he sold goods. He had, he had dispatchers and, you know, he had all these camels. All, and so these are people that Job would have been friends with in other countries that he did business with. And he not only did bis with, business with them, they were his friends. All right, so... Um, Eli, um, Eliphaz, I had to look these up, listen to the guy on the, the reads the Bible, you know, so I could fi figure out how to say these words. Yeah, so I know how to say it right, and I still might not get it right. Eliphaz, uh, the T man, I've always pronounced it as T might, but it's T man, T man, there we go, and Bildad, the Shua from Shua, and Zophar, the Namanite, Namaite, for they had made an appointment together. These three guys made an appointment to get together and go see Job. All right? And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, so they looked at Job, and there must have been some time before that the, they did not come uh, after everything was taken away, they came after he'd received the boils and he's sitting on the ash heap. So how much time has elapsed, we don't know. But it took them to get from, they, it took, took them to hear word of what happened and then make an appointment to get together and then to travel to where Job is. However long that was. And when they saw Job afar off, they didn't even know the guy. I mean, Job had changed so much and had become so disfigured and so not himself. Um, they knew him not, and they lifted up their voice, and they wept, and they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads towards the heavens. 
This was not a show. This was their sign of grieving for Job and all that had taken place. And one of the things is, see, this is a challenge. If this could happen to Job, it could happen to them. All right? So we don't want this happening to us. So in this part, we find them doing the best thing they could. It's called the um, ministry of presence. (laughs) Being with someone, not having to say anything. I just don't know what to say to give them a right answer. There is no right answer. You know? He's lost everything. He's had to, you know, in some ways, we'd say he might as well be dead. He's everything he, you see, everything he has is gone. He might as well be dead. But that's not true. See, it doesn't matter the loss. It matters that the, it matters the life. It doesn't matter the loss. It matters the life. And the life is the light of the world. The life that God has given us is more important than any loss that we can experience. So the li- that life is where we're at. And so our life then, can, if, if, when, as long as we're alive and we have, we, have, we, we have purpose, it doesn't matter our failures, it doesn't matter our loss, we have life and we're in this moment, do we believe? Do I have faith, you see? Do I have faith to understand that this, may, this happened to Job, it may happen to me? And yes, it may. But the understanding is, will be with Job to see him through. God, people will be with me to see me through. And even if not, God will never leave me nor forsake me. See? We have life. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes, whenever we struggle to say the right... When we struggle to say things, we generally say stupid things. Yeah, what, later on. I, I, the last really stupid thing I, I remember somebody saying is at the casket of, the, of a, a guy's wife, and he goes up to another man, his friend, and says, oh, I sure hope she looks better in heaven than she does there. <laughs> True story. <laughs> You know, or, of course, the old one, well, you know, you, you have five other kids, you know. <laughs> Sorry about your loss. You know, uh, it's like God needed another rosebud in heaven. He took yours. Uh, you know, it's just people trying to bring comfort from a human perspective of what it's like. But life is not about figuring it out. Life is about trust. Okay? Life is about trust, trusting God. Trusting his word. That's why his word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. God did not charge God, Job did not charge God foolishly because he knew God in his heart. And he couldn't think that God would do such a thing as this. And if he did, there must be a reason. Because he has given me good things and I am thankful for it and now it's all gone, I'm still thankful for it because I'm still God's.
Well, the thing with, you know, even Johnstown. Johnstown's had three floods. One of them would be enough to wipe out a community. We've had three, and we're still <laughs> recuperating, recovering from the, the three. And they've had an immense um, impact on our region. And so what God, is, we're, God is still alive. God is still in control. Why did this happen? Don't know. We can point out reasons, you know, uh, ge- uh, geological, you know, making a dam rain and, you know, storms and floods. and all. We can put all those scenarios together, but God's in charge. Well, when, when problems come, hopefully people will either turn to God or turn against God. And that's why for us, we, you know, we need to maintain our faith. You know, we maintain our faith. You know, it's, I mean, we don't have many people. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that this isn't a vibrant ministry of our life and to the community for God. You know, we have to maintain our faith in the difficulties, whether it's emotional, physical, financial, relational. We've got to maintain our faith and our trust in God. God does all things well. I don't understand why. You know, I don't understand why people don't like me. You know, I'm a likable guy. I mean, you know, you know, it's just, you know, they got problems, you know. No, no, they're from three different countries. They have, they have, basically, they have a business. Um, from what I'm understanding, they have a business arrangement with Job. He's running caravans of camels, and they're probably, you know, they're, um, what is it whenever you have tractor trailers take trucks to a, a certain place, and then they change trucks and go further, and is it a service, the, a depot? So these guys might have been a uh, Home Depot. <laughs> you know, they, they were bringing the things and then they would, they would ship them out from there. Or, you know, so Job was, you know, he had all these camels and it wasn't just for pasture. <laughs> so... Right. Right. Well, the, the, the concept, and we're going to find this out in the weeks to come. You do good things, you get rewarded. You do bad things, you get punished. Okay? So, the three guys are, are the three amigos. Oh. <laughs> they're, going to, they're, going to, they're going to try and convince Job that he sinned. Because that's the only reason any of this could have happened. That's right. Right. Okay, if he acknowledges his sin, he'll come out of it. And if it is sin that Job has done in secret, we're safe. (laughs) Ultimately, we do what we do to keep this person safe. Unless we live our life for Christ. And so that's whenever we find the, the, the agape love, the sacrificial love, in which we're willing to go out on the limb to help someone else. See, so self-preservation, you know, and that's like when the dictators and all those things, you know, they have all these billions of bucks and they've killed all these people and they'll run for their lives because they don't want to die, you know? You know, they're, they're fleeing for their life because they don't want the people they've been killing and torturing to get to them. So they'll do anything for self-preservation. That's why Satan says flesh for flesh. 
You get him down to self-preservation and he'll curse you. It didn't, but, and, the, and the guys, the three friends, they're, they're at one of their, I'm thinking, from, from my human perspective of looking at this, they're, they're wanting self-preservation because if they can convince Job that doing good, uh, that he had to have done something wrong, they can look at their life and say, hey, I've been good, so none of that bad stuff's going to come to me, so you've got to have a problem. And people do that all the time. How many people shun the poor? You know, the homeless. You know, you, you, there's been something you did for that. And for some of them, it is. And some of it was just all the bad breaks of life and they've never been able to get out of it. So how do we then, who was it? Oh, our neighbor met someone at Flight 93. She's a volunteer over there. And she met these people and they were, uh, they brought, there was five of them, I think, in a car, and, they, and their, their testimony to her was, we're out spending our inheritance, not my cho- our children's inheritance. And what they're doing was, they were going to the homeless, and they were going to people who had lost everything, and they were helping them financially to get back on their feet. So they were spending their wealth that they were going to transfer to their kids they were spending it to help people get out of the poverty, the mindset. Yeah, so, but so you see, these are things like David in El Salvador, they, money and his, and from where he sits, and perhaps that's what these people were trying to do too, was that giving people money doesn't get them out of poverty. Relational experiences with them, helping them to understand that they have value have value will help them elevate themselves out of their poverty. Job has this relational experience with God that in his, in his loss and in his poverty, in his ash heap of society, he is, he is um, wanting to, his relationship with God is keeping him and sustaining him in his poverty because God has given me good things. God has brought this about God is still in control. See, that's our faith. Job is a good place. <laughs> he allowed it, yeah. You can, you can, he gives Satan permission, go ahead. But you see, in our own life, personally, we can't say that person, you know, that we have to look at ourselves because we are accountable for us. I can't say all the people that I dealt with and families that we dealt with and hospice and the dying and the grieving, you know, you don't know every, you don't know what's going on in their society and their life, what's, you know, we're only responsible for us and how we are going to respond to that situation. And we want to do the right thing before God and let the, resp- let the consequences be what they are because we're doing the right thing before God. Don't give out your mother's maiden name and your social security number. (laughs) Don't do that. Why? Trying to protect you. You see, how many of the laws that we look at in the scripture, the Ten Commandments are basically to protect and provide for us. So anytime we break the laws of God, we are (laughs) breaking the law that we are, that's meant to protect us and meant to provide. So that's why doing the right things for the right reasons and we stand on that. Now, we may have made a mistake with this, all this other stuff, but the idea is we want to do the right things for the right reason. So that's Job. Isn't he good? Nah, he's painful. <laughs> Next, Job laments. And we're in Job chapter 3. Any thoughts? So, we are, we are part of being. Amen. Our, our, that was last week's was uh, obeying and being. <laughs> you know, obeying the laws or being the person of Christ that loves God for the laws. Okay. Father, we thank you. God, in all things, we give you thanks. 
And Lord, we pray for your wisdom and guidance and your understanding to be ours as we follow you each day. God, bless us, give us strength, continue to hold our hearts and our lives in your hands, and Lord, we are safe there. So give us wisdom from where we sit, give us perspective of our relationship with you and your perspective, Lord, in all that we say and do. Bless this lesson to our hearts and this difficult, difficult lesson of loss and grief and sorrow and misunderstanding and but remember that all authority, all authority is given to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm.